This is a great technique to use if you want to use your drone to capture data over relatively large areas in a fast and systematic way. And I use this if I come to a location that I don't know too well and I want to do a quick reconnaissance so that I can then go in and grid map other areas in more detail that I want to create an author mosaic from. Or also if I just want to cover large areas that I can use for calibration and, sat and validation of satellite data. This is not the technique to use if you want to create to author mosaics. It's just the reconnaissance type stuff. So I've opened Litchi on my iPad and I'm going to zoom into a location where I want to create my first mapping mission. So I'm at this reef, I'm going to come all the way in and then you'll see some tools over on the left hand side of the screen. I'm just going to work through those to start with. So the first thing that I want to do is to hit save and I just want to save the mission that, I, that I'm going to create. So I have already previously saved it as test, so I'm just going to crack on and call it test again, that's okay. And then the next thing I'll do is to move down to the next icon there, which will allow me to set the general settings of the mission. So I'll click on that one and open up, open up these settings and you'll see a range of different options that I can choose from in terms of the parameters. So at the moment, I'm just going to keep the parameters that you'll see set up on the screen. One of the things to really look at is this, the speed that you're going to fly at as you're flying between the points where it takes photos and makes its turns, etc. Now in this one, we can actually fly really quickly because the point is not to create lots and lots of overlapping photos. It's just get to get things done quite quickly. And I have flown this up to 8 meters a second before when I'm at low altitude. For this one, I'm just going to keep up 4 meters a second, but of course that's something you can tweak as you have more experience. Then as I scroll down, you can have a look at this photo capture interval. Now this is again something else that you can play with. My idea here is not to capture overlapping photos, and so there can actually be gaps between the photos that I take. I'm going to be flying at relatively low altitude, and 30 meters is, is a relatively nice sampling distance. It's kind of like flying a transect if you like. I'll scroll down and just check those other points that I have in terms of those parameters. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click close. Now this sets the general mission parameters. The next thing is to make the first waypoint where we're going to capture data. So say I want to come in around this area and I'm just going to quickly cover an area that looks like this. So I'm just going to tap on the screen. And as I do that, you'll see that it's just created this first waypoint here. And you'll see it's just called number one, and it's got 30 above, and 30 is the flying altitude that's been set there. So if I want to change these parameters, what I want to do is I'm just going to click on this number one here, and I'll see those parameters pop up for what I've created here. So you'll see that some of the parameters are coming through from the general mission settings, and others you can change here as well. So the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to decrease my flight altitude to 20 meters rather than 30. So for this particular mission, I'm looking at sea cucumbers. So I know that I need to be really down low. So I can just change that, get to my 20 meters. That's going to set that. I'm going to keep the cruising speed that I'd already set over here when I set my mission settings. And then as I scroll on through, I'm just going to double check that everything looks okay to me. Now you'll also see here's another setting that's been pulled through from the general mission settings to capture data every 30 meters. Now if you do want to change this at, that, at this point, that's perfectly fine to do that as well. You can change it by increasing, decreasing, and changing it to being by seconds or by meters. But at the moment, we're just going to keep it at 30 meters. So once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click the X up the top there. And that's set my first point. Now, when I go to set my second point, it's going to use those same parameters. So I'm going to tap on the screen again. You'll see my second point pop up there. Uh, altitude 20 meters, altitude 20 meters. I can tap into point number two and just make sure that those settings are exactly the same. They certainly should have carried over. And you'll see I've got 571 meters between my two points. And perhaps that's maybe something I want to increase or decrease depending on where my boat was actually anchored at the time. And so what I then want to do is I can just crack on by just giving myself a number of additional flight lines. And you'll be able to see in the bottom left here how long that flight is going to be in terms of the time and the distance. So if I'm flying with my Phantom 4, depending on how far away I'm anchored from that, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to get the flight in, say, in around about 15 minutes. And that's going to allow me time to get to and from 
the boat as well. If I do want to change the location of any of those points, I generally find it easiest to zoom in a little bit and then just click and hold on them to move that. You'll see it is a little bit finicky and takes a little bit of practice to get that right, but you'll see that it updates itself there. And by the same token, if I wanted to actually remove that point, say I've decided actually it's a little bit too long and I don't want to fly that far, I'm just going to click on that point itself. So clicking on number six there, and you'll see in the upper left-hand corner here, there's a little minus button, but no longer want that point. I'm just going to hit minus, and you'll see that in the background there, it has been removed from that this flight plan. So if I also then wanted to remove number five, I'd then go ahead and click the minus up there. So you can see that my total mission there has a distance of nearly two and a half kilometers over 13 minutes, and it's, it's covered quite a large area. When it comes time to then connecting my drone, I'll do that just in the normal way in terms of setting up my, my tablet, my controller, my drone, and you will see that it will come up as connected at the top. And when we're ready to fly, then we'll use the play button over on the left hand side to send it on its mission. It's also possible to do this flight planning in a desktop version, but of course you need Wi-Fi to then be able to connect that desktop version and update it through to the iPad or Android device that you're using as well. So if you're out in the field and you don't have Wi-Fi, then planning on the app is the best way to go.